No better way to start a video than with some really cute bunnies. So uh, we've got a few in the yard. Um, not in the yard, but in the cages. And um, just showing you, this one's a giant male. Uh, this one are, we don't know actually quite what these are, but they're very cute, little small, still babies, both female. And then we've got this bucko, who's going to be a great breeder. I've also got my dog, my trusty canine. Yes, baby. <laughs> so we've just got a storage of some hay, really useful for uh, nesting or for uh, the rabbits, because rabbits do need a constant supply of hay. So our little grapevines are coming out. Important to keep this uh, base watered. And that's uh, one of the chickens. We have four chickens. This is the dog house right now. I just I didn't finish the siding or anything, so the dog just goes in there. Got a really nice tree right here. A few years old at least, at least like three or four. I don't quite remember. I think it's a plum. Very nice. It was just store-bought plum. Stick it in the ground and see what happens. I made this a few weeks ago. Uh, just a little bed, give you a few corner views, and um, yeah, it's literally a bed. There's bed posts. We had some extra, so before we threw it out, we said, "Why don't we just use them?" So I just put a little funny quote. Got some tomatoes, some other salad and Swiss chards and peas and a corn. A little bit of cabbage, you can see right there. And uh, I've actually even started, I've been trying to get some winter melon going, which is with the little white stick. So you can see everything's netted, and that's mainly for the chickens not to dig it up. I think I'll go clockwise with this tour. So we've got a really tall, beautiful tree. Really nice. I just wanted to show you some of the plants that we have around here, which is some really nice mint. I, we actually moved the mint quite a bit because I had to move it for the bed. And uh, so it's actually, this is a pretty good yield compared to what I did to it. Another tree. These are all fruit trees that I'm showing you. So someday they should yield something. A little bit of parsnip down there near the root. This is my dryer. I stick tomatoes and pears in it to dry. The pears turn out really nice and sweet and the tomatoes have a really rich and concentrated flavor. Um, this bed usually looks a lot nicer. We were planning on filling it up with corn. This is another fruit tree. Then we got another fruit tree. These are all coming just from seeds from the store. Nothing fancy. This is our parsnip I planted last year and it seems like it's coming back even stronger than it did before. Uh, the chickens don't seem too bothered with it so I guess uh, that's pretty good. Oh, another note. This is another cabbage. But this thing is really quite useful. I mean, it seems this tree is in full sun all the time so it's really useful to have uh, a water source and it seems to really help uh, the growth and to make it really quickly to make it go fast so that's just filled with water I'm not sure if you could see that you can see the line of water right there we've got quite a few pine trees that we just grabbed uh, when, uh, when we could and um, they're really nice all different kinds really great for shade This on to my right, beside this whole bushel of random flowers, is a gooseberry bush. Very nice, lots of big yield. Uh, you can see there's some here. The biggest issue we have with these are just birds. So we put a net over them after. A little predator trap, in case uh, we heard there were some raccoons around. You never know. One time we came out and the raccoons were all the way up in this big poplar tree. So gotta be careful. We have lost a few chickens in our years of uh, having them. 
think we've had chickens for about four, five years. So this is, seems to be a bush at the end of the yard, filled with flowers, really beautiful. Um, even if it's not edible, it's still part of my yard. A giant stump that came, when we came here, and uh, we just never got around to burning it. So uh, she's guarding her territory. A little piece of uh, really handy fiberglass for any kind of building purposes. This actually used to be all just covered with uh, ra rosemary bushes. Okay, make sure I don't step on her. Uh, some extra chicken wire. And these seem to be mice holes, or chipmunk holes, whatever you prefer. Anyways, it's still the chicken speed if you just leave it laying around. The nesting boxes are outdoors right now. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the inside. We got three eggs. But uh, really gorgeous. You know, beautiful eggs. Very large poplar tree. Um, this was my attempt at making a quick chicken coop. Not too bad, but... Then we've got this hole, which I dug. You can see they're following me around. They want some seed. This hole I dug uh, last winter. Well, before winter. I just didn't protect it through the winter. It was much deeper before. I wanted to turn it into a pond for catfish. And maybe build a greenhouse around it in order to do an aquaponics setup. I even started experimenting with maggots and seeing how, uh, how that would work in case I needed them. I mean, chickens benefit from maggots as well, but so do fish. We've got a few nice trees. Also, one of my favorite trees, lilacs. Everybody loves lilacs. Great for the kitchen vase. Uh, this is my mom's quick uh, chicken protection to grow some extras, like potatoes or peas or anything you want, because they will. They will eat those. Chickens will. This just bloomed, but a lot of the blossoms have gone in the pots now. They're coming after me because they think I have food. This is really awesome, really pretty. Uh, it's just like a globe, but it lights up at night and it looks like fishes, so it's really awesome. This is some cabbage that we have yet to transplant. A little windy now. You can see the vines are starting to come over the edges. That'll be filled with grapes. And I'll keep you updated.